Hey, it's John Weisenberger, and one of the most common questions I get from business owners is, how can I get my existing customers to buy more from me, to remain loyal, uh, to perhaps move up to some premium products? So at the BizCon Cleveland conference this year, I gave a workshop on customer retention, and these videos are extracts from that workshop. So um, let me know if you enjoy them. Let me know if they're helpful. Give me some comments uh, below, down below here, and uh, let me know what you think. How can you make customers feel like you care about them and how can you keep them from leaving? Well, I got five strategies for you here we're going to talk about and five areas of your business you can take some actions in that can help reduce the amount of defections that you'd have. So the number one area is, is to have a caring attitude. Have empathy for your customer. Make sure all your customer facing people are smiling when they talk to a customer. Make sure they're not being defensive. Um, don't use jargon if you're in the medical industry or the lawyer industry. Try to talk to them in a language they can understand. Um, use their name when you greet them or when you engage with them. You know, one study shows that in the hospitality industry, desk clerks only reference the customer by name in about 24% of the interactions. So um, just creating those personal connections with your customers or clients or patients and having a caring attitude and showing empathy towards what they're experiencing can go a long way in building those relationships that last a long time and can keep a loyal customer coming back for more. Second thing you can do is where you have the opportunity allow customized practices. People today want personalized individualized services and if there's a way your business can empower customer facing employees to make decisions on the spot as to whether to allow a fee to be waived or a price to be reduced or maybe a customer needs its credit line uh, raised for a short term. In fact, I've seen businesses that had multi-million dollar customers that refused to take an order because that multi-million dollar customer had exceeded their credit limit. Well you might want to say, look, we'll get that resolved and, uh, you know, we'll make the shipment to you anyway so you don't shut your factory down or something like that, right? So find ways that you or your employees give them latitude to make the, uh, the decision to offer a customized, personalized service. And if it doesn't hurt your profitability, if it doesn't violate any particular moral, legal, or safety rule, then look for ways to do that. I use the example of this pizza here with four different toppings in four different areas of the pizza. And that is a perfect example of a customized product delivered to a customer who ordered that. Now I would challenge you to go to any of the major national chains who have switched everything to online ordering today and I would challenge you to get that pizza. Today if you go to any of the online ordering pizza places they will have a drop down menu that will let you pick the crust, it will let you pick your toppings, it will let you pick your uh, sauces you want on it, thin crust, thick crust, spicy sauce, regular sauce, but you can only get a pizza with all those things in the entire pizza. You can't begin to order a pizza with four different toppings on two slices each. So in this case, if you're a small pizza shop that's competing against the large national chains, being able to take an order to do this, whether it's walk in or on the phone. And the other thing today, a lot of people don't offer ordering on the phone, which we're going to talk about in a minute here when it comes to convenience. But look for ways to customize your processes. Look for ways that if it's necessary to deviate from a policy to keep a customer satisfied. Again, if you're not impacting your profitability or violating any safety, legal or uh, moral rules, find ways to let your employees do that. The number three thing is, if you would ask yourself, what's the one thing I don't have enough of in my life? The answer is time. So any way you can provide more convenience for your customers to allow them to self-serve, uh, to have a self-service aspect of your business if possible, that's a good thing. If you can provide 24-7 service access, that's always a good thing. If you're a manufacturer or someone who provides information, make it easy to get that information. Let them download your specs or your drawings. Let them download information. If they need to make appointments online, if you're not doing that today, allow them to schedule an appointment with you online. 
allow them to perhaps uh, get a return material authorization online instead of having to call somebody. So anything you can do to make it more convenient for access to your product or to you as an individual, um, anything you can do to save them time will help generate better experiences. Number four, anything you can do to compress cycle times is always a good thing. If you can keep customers from being on hold on your phone, if you can make that hold time less, that's a good thing. If you can make the time it takes to deliver your product less, if you look at Amazon and some of the new uh, ways of delivering things, people expect quicker response. They want instant gratification. You want to be able to uh, deliver things quicker. If you uh, have someone in your customer service department, make sure they understand what the cycle time is. Set the expectation that it might take a week to actually close the order or ship the product. But anything you can do to compress cycle times across your business is a good thing. So look for processes in your business where you can make things go faster for your customer. Then lastly, number five is what I call committed follow through. And it's all about when someone gets a problem or an engagement with a customer, that person needs to take ownership for it. You need to encourage the environment where people, it's, if you touch it, you own it. And this means if you end up uh, getting someone on the phone and you have to do a handoff to another department and that department then has to go solve the customer's problem, that means the first person that touched it needs to follow up with that other department and then call back or email the client and make sure that they know what's going on. In fact, one of the biggest things you can do to keep from having an unsatisfied customer is to make sure that you either solve the problem quickly or if you can't solve it quickly, then make sure you're giving them constant feedback and status updates. In fact, I, I had one person that came up to me after the workshop and said, you know, this is a big problem in the roofing industry or the landscaping industry. She said, you know, I scheduled this roofing job. I was told I was on the schedule. Weeks went by, weeks went by, no calls, no, no dates were given. I never knew when the guy was going to come out, if he was going to come out. That's the kind of stuff that annoys people. And the next time they go to look for a roofer, I bet she's not going to recommend that particular company, all because even if they did a good job, they kept her hanging and she could never schedule her life around when will they be out to take care of my roof. So committed follow through means all the aspects of the connection with the customer where you would either tell them what's going on or make sure you don't have to repeat information when the handoff occurs internally, um, all those types of things. So the top five summary is have a caring attitude, look for ways to do customized practices, provide convenience, compress cycle times, do a committed follow through. Um, there's a picture of a mind map over here with each of those five characters or characters there's a picture with each of those five categories. And if you'd like to get a copy of that mind map, plus a copy of my chain reactions book about how you can improve the whole customer experience management uh, process. If you give me your email address, you go to this bit.ly slash chain reactions book. I'll let you download a free copy of the mind map, which gives you more detail under each of those five categories, as well as you can get a uh, free PDF copy of my book, Chain Reactions. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Um, again, I had a great time delivering at the BizCon Cleveland convention this week, and I thought it might be good to shoot this quick video and let you guys um, have a benefit if you couldn't make it out to the conference. So if you uh, are in the Cleveland Akron area and you can get there next year, look for it. It usually takes place in October and look forward to seeing you there.